Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dice Cup, and this evening I'm joined by Steve. Steve. And we've just finished playing Doppel So Clever, which is uh, the English translation, I think, is twice as clever. This is the sequel to Ganshern Clever, or Pretty Darn Clever, uh, and it's very similar. So the dice mechanism is exactly the same. Uh, slightly different colored dice here, but on your turn, you roll the dice and you pick whichever one you want. So let's say I go for the five here, and then you can use it by sort of scoring on your sheet. And then every dice lower than the one that you picked gets locked, so you can't use those. So that was a bit of a daft choice, because on my next turn, all I can roll is this blue one. But uh, you sort of take it, and then potentially you're going to score up to three. Now, they've added an extra little thing here, as well as potentially getting some re-rolls, which lets you re-roll the dice, and plus ones, which lets you lose an extra dice. There's also now unlocks you can get. Certain bonus areas here you see will get you unlocks, which means you could take one of the dice back, and then on your next go, you get to roll it. So potentially I could get three dice here. So I'm picking three dice. Everyone else gets to pick one of the dice that I've locked and didn't get to choose. Now, in terms of how they'll score on the sheet, obviously you're just trying to get as many points as you can by filling out dice, circles and crosses and numbers of things in the different sections. So how do the new sections work? Well, I'm probably easiest to go from the bottom up here. So in terms of the pink section, you just get the points for the numbers you've written here. But underneath each of these numbers, there's actually a requirement that you can see that, but that says greater than or equal to six, and this one's five and four and three. You can write any number you like in here, but if you write the number that matches the requirement, so if you write a six on the greater than or equal to six one, you get the bonus at the bottom. So in this case, that lets me put a circle or a cross in the yellow section. So you can see you're getting lots of plus ones and unlocks and things and other dice you can then like cross off on the other sections. Green is, they come in pairs. So you write one number in here, and then you subtract the number next to it. So eight minus two will give me six points, and then 12 minus three is nine points. And obviously as you write the numbers in, you're getting the bonus underneath, but they are multiplied. So you can see here there's a times three. Whatever green number right here, we're gonna get multiplied by three, and then the next one is multiplied by one. So you have to think carefully about what they're gonna be multiplied by, but it's always the pair, the difference between each pair, that's how many points you get for green. Uh, blue is very straightforward, but remember, blue you combine with white, just like Gans, and Clever. So whatever, whenever you take the blue, you'd actually be adding the white dice to it, so that would be a six. But every subsequent number you write in blue, you always left to write, has to be uh, lower or equal to the one before. Again, you're potentially picking up bonuses, and at the end, you don't get the points for the numbers you write down. It's just how far you get. In this case, you get the points at the top, so I got 36 points for blue. Yellow, the first time you... Um, put a number in yellow you just circle it so if I roll the two I would circle the two there and then you're getting bonuses potentially for filling columns like that gets me a fox remember foxes are your lowest score at the end of the game like the lowest section each of your foxes is worth that many points so I got a fox here and you can see I got a fox here you count how many foxes you got whichever was the lowest scoring section that's how much each fox is worth uh, so you can get bonuses for completing the columns see plus ones and things but also bonuses for completing the rows as you do the circles, that unlocks a yellow one, for example. But once you've circled the yellow section, a number, the next time you put a yellow in, if you get the same number, you can cross it off. And then at the end of the game, you're getting points up here for the number of crosses. Not the circles, but just the crosses. So I did very badly on this section. Only two crosses, so that gets me ten points. And the weirdest section is the grey section. So I'm going to have to roll the dice to explain this one, because it is very strange. So you roll the dice, and when you take the grey dice... Oh, this is fortuitous. I'm going to alter these slightly, just to make this clear. Let's imagine this was a five. Where's the five? There we go. When you take the grey, you take the grey, and then everything that was strictly lower than the grey, you get to cross off in this section. So I could cross off the pink one, the blue three, the yellow two, and the wild is any two alike. So you cross off the appropriate numbers from the four colours here. The grey itself you can also cross off, that would be a five, and when you use it in the grey section that is also wild so it can be any five alike in this case. But that obviously is going to lock all of these, and I only have one dice left to roll. Uh, at the end of the game, you get points, well, I should say you're getting point uh, bonuses for completing columns here, you get the bonus at the top, but then every row scores you the points at the bottom. So I had five crosses in this row, that gets me 16 points. One cross in this row, only two points. Two crosses, gets me four points, etc. So you add up all the points for different sections. Uh, you can also potentially get bonuses by completing, by or at least getting, all the re-rolls, unlocks, or plus ones. And most points at the end of the winner, what do you think? Pretty Down Clever is probably my favourite roll and write by quite a distance um, and I think this is better and this might just, might just be because I it's newer um, but I feel like it's harder to, it feels like it's going to be harder to solve as such. I think Pretty Down Clever I know roughly 
how far I want to get in each section and what a good first move is and whatever. But this is just much harder. I've, I've had to use my reroll on the first go in this game because you're like, I can't take anything. That kind of, the difference between swinging, now blue, the blue dice used to try and get a mix of things. Now you want to start with a high one, which means you can't take, you know, you generally want to pick the lowest dice available to keep your choices open, but you can't take blue at the start, and you can't take green at the start because you want the first green dice you take to be as big as possible. So you've kind of got this dilemma. And one of the best things about this game that uh, Pretty Down Clever didn't have is the putbacks, the unlocks. So basically where you can cross out one of your unlocks to return a dice you've locked, which means... The, the grey dice action is very skill, not necessarily skillful, but like you roll it, think, is this a good chance to take the grey? And when you take the grey, you lock everything. And if you've got enough unlocks, you can kind of unlock the white dice and the yellow dice and maybe have another go at rolling stuff later. So it's really nice. The fact that the green dice swings, sometimes you want a high one, sometimes you want a low one, which means if Dean takes a green six and I've got a plus one, only half the time am I going to be able to kind of copy Dean's green six because only half the time I want a high green, the other half the time I want a low green. Um, it's really nice. I think it's thinkier. I think games of this take longer than pretty down clever um, but overall I also think it's slightly better ok Dean yeah so I've only played the two a few times each I think I'd prefer this one I think as Steve says there's a lot less of there is a solution to it it really does depend on what you're rolling but also the unlock I think also avoids the I've just been completely stitched up by the rolling of the dice so oddly you, you've got less of a there is one route through more thinking but also if you've not played it lots of times you don't feel that you can get stitched up just by the dice so I think I do prefer this one um, to to the uh, to the one it's sort of like the follow on from uh, I think I'd definitely play it given the choice I would definitely take this one okay rating seven and a half to an eight okay Steve this one's not a filler, the other one is. This one is a proper thinky game that takes a lot longer. I'm going to rate it 9 out of 10. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think they're both great games. And personally, I would find it difficult to pick between the two. This one is definitely thinkier. It's well named, twice as clever. There's a lot more thinking required here. But I think Gansh and Clever has a more family appeal. If I wanted to sit down and play a game with a family, I would pick Gansh and Clever over this one. But playing it with other gamers, you definitely want to go for Duffelt So Clever. So it's a fantastic game. Um, I've enjoyed the Roller Mites more and more and more. Um, personally, I think I'll be on an eight and a half. Uh, it's a great one if you like this kind of thing. All right, thanks very much for watching. That was Duffelt So Clever.